Hey everybody, today's lesson, uh, solving equations using addition and subtraction. So uh, what this means is we're going to be looking at, and you've, you've seen some equations like this already, we're going to be looking at, uh, and I'll make it really simple, an equation that looks something like this, where it's x plus 5 equals 8. Okay, and this is this is absolutely very, very basic, I know. But we're going to look at this and say, uh, so far what we've been doing is we've been doing mental math, where what we've said would be, what number plus 5 equals 8? And you guys could all tell me, well, absolutely, it's going to be 3, because 3 plus 5 equals 8. Uh, what we're going to do is start off with some more basic equations like this today. And instead of using mental math, now what we've got to start doing is getting the process down. There is, a, there is instead of using mental math, there is an actual mathematical process that we want to follow and get used to doing um, so that when the problems get bigger and badder and harder, uh, we have the process down. So even though I know some of these today you're going to be able to use mental math, um, I'm going to ask you, um, you know, to try to follow this process and organize your thoughts because half the battle in when we're solving equations is yes, of course, the final thing is we want to get the correct answer. But as far as our unit goes, um, half the battle is learning how to show your work correctly too. And what we're going to be doing here is stuff like this, knowing that when I see a plus 5, that really what I want to do is the inverse of that, which is to minus 5. And since I minus 5 from there, I minus 5 from here, and that's going to give me 8 minus 5 is going to tell me that x is going to equal 3. And again, I know you can do mental math to do that, um, but we want to learn the process and how to do that, because eventually the problems are going to get bigger and harder, where you might be doing stuff like this, you know, where they just get a lot more difficult. Okay, where I can keep going, and then let's just do equals 23 if that was the whole thing. And then again, this looks big and nasty, but eventually we're going to be able to solve stuff like that and be able to come up with the correct answer. But it all starts today with doing something on these more basic problems and learning how to show our work the correct way. Okay, so that's what we're going to get into right now. Example 1, and you can see I have the rules off to the side already, but example 1 says x plus 9 equals negative 3. Again, mental math tells me, okay, what number plus 9 equals negative 3, and maybe what we want to do is work backwards and do negative 3, and instead of adding 9, if I do negative 3 minus 9, because that's the opposite of adding 9, negative 3 minus 9 is what's going to give me negative 12, okay? So that's the answer that I should get here. Now, how do we mathematically show that process? So I'm going to go back here because we don't want to do mental math today. Today it's all about learning how to show our work. Okay, And we're going to go through the rules. So rule number one, our goal is to get the variable by itself on one side of the equation. What I mean one by one side, that's our first rule right here. What I mean by on one side of the equation is this. If I see the equal sign, to me, that separates my equation into two parts. Like if I draw drew a dotted line right down there, I have the x plus 9 on one side of the equation, I have the negative 3 on the other side of the equation. What I want to do is look at the side of the equation with the variable, the x plus 9. In rule number 1 here, our goal is to get the variable by itself on one side of the equation means I don't want it to be x plus 9. I just want it to be x. x is going to be selfish here. It just wants to be x. Because eventually my answer is going to be x equals something where the x is all alone. That's my goal. So that tells me in this problem right here that I have to get rid of the plus 9. I want that plus 9 just to go away. Okay? Um, how do we do that? Okay? Rule number two. To do this, we use inverse operations. All right? I don't want to use the word opposite operations. It's inverse operations because inverse means instead of adding 9, we're actually going to subtract 9. The inverse of adding is subtracting. The inverse of subtracting is adding. The inverse of multiplying is dividing. The inverse of dividing is going to be multiplying. So when I see x plus 9 equals negative 3, what I want to do is I realize, okay, the plus 9 is what I want to get rid of. So what's the inverse of adding 9? I'm going to subtract 9. And the reason I do that, if I kind of cover up everything else here, let's pretend the x wasn't there. Let's pretend there was nothing else there. When I look at this and I see a plus 9 and a minus 9, if I were to combine those two things because they're opposites, a positive 9 and a negative 9 is what adds to give me 0, which really tells me that those things just go away. Okay, And that's our goal. I'm going to back up here. 
That's our goal is to get rid of that plus 9. So how do I get rid of a plus 9? I'm going to subtract 9, okay, because I'm going to put a line here. That's like my equal sign. And what happens is a plus 9 and a minus 9 cancel each other out because it ends up equaling 0. That x can kind of just come down here, so it's like x plus 0. Here's my equal sign, okay. But now, here's our last rule, which says... Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other, okay? So because I subtracted 9 right here, I have to subtract 9 here as well, okay? Because I subtracted 9 on the left side of the equation, then on the right side of the equation, I also have to subtract 9. Now, a lot of people get hung up on right here. I have a negative 3 and a negative 9, and they go, well, am I supposed to add those or subtract those? Guys, it's all about our integer rules. You have to ask yourself, who cares about a plus or a minus? You care about what are the signs of these numbers. I have a negative 3 and a negative 9. Our integer rules say if the signs are the same, we're supposed to add them. That's what tells me if I add or subtract. If the signs are the same, we add. If the signs are different, I subtract. In this case, okay, again, right here, these signs are the same. Negative 3, negative 9. My rules say to add. Negative 3 and a negative 9, when I add them together, give me a negative 12. Which then gives me my final answer, because I really don't have to write the plus zero at all. It really gives me a final answer of x equals negative 12, which is what we first wrote down a long time ago when we did our mental math. Okay? Now, you can go ahead and check your answer if you want, because when you get an answer, you should always know if you got the correct answer. Now, let's take this negative 12 here for a second, and let's just plug it back into the beginning for x here, because that tells me that the problem should have been this. If I plug negative 12 in for x and that was supposed to be added to 9, and that's supposed to equal negative 3, and you just want to check to see if it works. Negative 12 plus 9. Okay, signs are different. I subtract. 12 minus 9 is 3. Keep the negative sign. Absolutely, that checks out. I know that I got a correct answer. Okay? I'm going to do one more here for you guys. I'm going to do example 2 so you can watch it one more time, then I'll turn you loose on example 3 and 4. Uh, okay, so here's our equation. 23 equals y minus 11. Uh, I like, at least when I first learn how to do this, start doing it, I like to put my dotted line in there to show my two sides of the equation. Okay? Now, what I see here is that the y is not by itself. I want it to be by itself, but it's not there yet. Right now, it's got that minus 11 with it. Okay? So my first goal is to get rid of the minus 11. Okay? So I do inverse operations. What's the inverse of subtracting 11? Well, it's to add 11. Okay? These two things always have to be opposites of each other because that's what's going to make them go away. Okay? So I'm going to add 11 because that's what makes these two things cancel out because a negative 11 and a positive 11 uh, ends up equaling 0. Okay? But my rule says because I added 11 to that side of the equation, now I have to add 11 to the other side of the equation. I draw the big line for an equal sign, and here's what I get. I have the y... Okay, over here all by itself now because the minus 11 got canceled out with the plus 11. Here's my equal sign. Uh, and this is really easy. They're both positive. Positive 23, a positive 11. So 23 plus 11 gives me 34. Y equals 34. Uh, and back in our rules it said get the variable by itself on one side of the equation. Well, I don't care if the variable ends up being on the left side of the equation like example 1. Or like in this problem here, example 2, where it winds over on the right. It really makes no difference to me. You just want to get the, the variable isolated. Uh, let's go ahead and check our work. All right. If I take this original equation again, which is 23 equals y minus 11. But now we're claiming that y is supposed to be 34. So let's go ahead and plug it in there. Okay, 34 goes in place of y minus 11. What I want to do is actually do 34 minus 11. So 34 minus 11, 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, and sure enough, these two things end up being equal to each other, so by checking our work, I know absolutely my answer is correct. So when I take a test, if I were to check my work, I don't even have to wait for, um, you know, for the teacher to, to grade the work, because I know already I got the right answer. Okay, here's two for you guys, all right? Example 3, example 4, uh, go ahead, pause the video, try them on your own. Okay, should be back from pausing the video. I hope you have answers. Hopefully you checked your work to see if they worked out. Now just to confirm it, I'm going to go through it quick. 
Uh, example three. So here's my dotted line. I see the x plus negative 8, which means I have to get rid of that negative 8. Okay? Now, I know that this is a plus. That's fine. But what I'm concerned with is that sign that's with the number. Because that's a negative 8, that's what I want to get rid of is the negative 8. How do I get rid of a negative 8? I have to add 8. Because a negative 8 and a positive 8 is what cancel each other out. That's the whole goal, is to get rid of that. Because I added 8 on the left side, I have to add 8 on the right side, which gives me, I have x left over there by itself, 10 plus 8 gives me 18. Okay, and if I check my work, okay, what's 18 plus negative 8? Okay, signs are different, you subtract, and sure enough, you get 10. So I know my answer works because it checks out. X equals 18. Uh, last one here, example 4, 20 plus R equals 30. Okay, um, when we're doing a problem like this, now again, what is with the R? Okay, well the 20 is with the R, and really what I'm looking for is, what's the sign on the 20? Well, because it's not a negative, there isn't a negative there, that means it's a positive. So you've got to ask yourself, how do I get rid of a positive 20? By writing down a minus 20, because positive 20 and negative 20 are what cancel each other out. That's what gets the R all by itself. Okay, but since I subtracted 20 from the left, I have to subtract 20 from the right, because that's a rule. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. That leaves me with a plus R equals, I have a positive 30, a negative 20. That leaves me with a positive 10. And if you check your work, you can plug that back in for R. What is 20 plus 10? Sure enough, it's 30. Uh, I know that that is correct. One last thing I want to point out here is this. I want you to notice that when I did example 4 here, um, I got rid of the 20s, but when I look at the plus R, when I brought the R down, I just kind of got rid of this plus sign. I didn't write plus R, mainly because we don't ever have to write our little plus there for the positive. We know whether I write a plus R or not, I know that that's a positive R. It's a little different, you know, it's, a, it's a lot different, if this was the problem. And this is worth noting, all right? So before we stop the video here, I want to show you this one last thing. What if I did something like this? What if I did... Um, 3 minus x equals 10, okay? Well, we would know how to solve this. I'd have to get rid of the 3. Here's my dotted line. I'd have to get rid of the 3 by subtracting 3. Since I subtracted 3 from the left and they cancel, I'd have to subtract 3 from the right. And I'd get this. Well, the 10 and the minus 3 is what gives me a 7. But watch what I get here, okay? When this x comes down now, now, you have to remember, I didn't get rid of this minus sign. That minus sign is still there, and we know that the sign of the x is always what's in front of it. So that minus sign has to come with it. So that's really a negative x. And here's the thing. When you get an answer like this, negative x equals 7, we're not done yet with the problem because our rule was the x has to be by itself. Right now, the x is not by itself because it has a negative with it. I don't want a negative x. I just want regular old x. So there's one trick. It's actually super easy, and I can explain why it is. I'm not going to do it yet, but I'm just going to show you the quick little shortcut. If I don't want that to be a negative x, it's very simple. Switch it. Make it a positive x. It's okay to do that. Okay, so if it's a negative, I can switch it to a positive, but the rules say whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So if I change the negative x into a positive x, that means I changed its sign. That means I have to change the sign on the 7. It becomes a negative 7. Okay? So if I change the sign of the x, I have to change the sign of the 7 to its opposite. Okay? So that's a little quick trick there if you end up having that subtraction sign on the variable. Okay. Good luck with the lesson.